This is Dave and Ryan. We're uh, in the new paint booth. Still working on finishing it out, getting everything, getting all the lights in. Today we got to get some graphics done on a uh, sportster to finish up paint job for it. And uh, this is a vinyl mask. We put it in vinyl cutter. And uh, I'm going to peel a little bit, weed a little bit, and let you guys see it. And um, we'll go from there. So go ahead. This piece is going to be on the back fender. And we're peeling out the negative because we're going to paint the positive. Some of you guys may have the uh, wife may have a cricket or something at home. I got a 32 inch cutter and uh, works pretty good. They're not terribly expensive. By the time you get the software and everything for a bigger cutter, you're probably in it for about 1500 bucks. But they're invaluable for doing work like this. This is what's going on in the back fender. By the way, we're in a new shop, and the new shop is located on my property out in the country. And the problem with that is, is I have some high-bred bird dogs. As you can hear, they're all in a kennel out back here, so. They're all uh, yelling it's time to eat. And yeah, I got quite a few bird dogs, so. So now that you can see that, that's going on the uh, back fender. <clears throat> we'll get the other team tank logo we did we got one done already this is some small stuff so Hopefully we get to the airbrush part of this tonight and we can get it uploaded and get a little bit of this online.
Ryan's always asking me how I can see all this. It's a matter of turning your head to the light in the right direction. And once in a while, you get a little piece that pops up. You gotta hold it down in the right spot. There it is. <laughs> Disappeared on me. As you can see, gotta get that apostrophe out there. And there we go. We got one tank logo already done and taped. Getting ready to tape these two, and we'll be back when we're putting them on the tank. So here's one of the stencils. We got the other two taped. Tape this one up, get it ready. You know, I didn't have enough there, we'll just cut some off here. What this is, is transfer tape. It allows me to transfer this vinyl mask. Now, if you haven't done this before, the issue will be do not use vinyl. This is a special mask, it's a low tack. If you use regular vinyl over base coat, you're gonna peel paint up when you go to take the vinyl off. So you need to purchase vinyl mask and there's, uh, you'll get that from sign companies. So you'll need to find a sign company somewhere in your area and buy this vinyl mask. You can cut it in a Cricut or a big cutter, whatever you wanna use, or cut it by hand. Got a design, you want to draw it on there and cut it by hand, you can do that with an X-Acto knife. But uh, you want to make sure you use vinyl mask and make sure you got some transfer tape. And we'll be right back with you when we get the tank set up. Ron's putting some glass cleaner on this. I tip. Using this vinyl mask, we've used uh, solvent-based cleaners for painting. And it makes that vinyl mask stick really hard. So we're gonna try this glass cleaner as opposed to using the uh, solvent based. Make sure we don't uh, stick this stuff down too hard. So what I'm doing, I put a registration mark with this yellow tape kind of get the flat edge of that tank because that tank kind of sets level on the bike. So what we want to do is stick to that edge. Now what I need to do is I want to place this right in here and I got a registration mark here, I got a registration mark here. What I've done is just use a piece of paper to kind of make a straight edge. And you can see this piece of tape mark center where this should set. So that when we pull this up, and I can use these registration marks to do the other side as well. So when you go to peel this, I lay it flat. I'm gonna get that started and just pull it back on itself slowly. Get any pieces of the design that start to come up with you. Just push them back down. Watch everything as you're pulling. And I can see 
one of these pieces on this mask has moved on me. So we're going to put it back in where it belongs. registration marks. Try to lay this in best we can. Now you're working on a round area with a flat piece of vinyl with tape on the back. So what I like to do is work from the center out. You're going to see a little ripple here or there. Hopefully we can keep it out of where the artwork has to go. And if we do then we'll fix it with the airbrush if we have to. But this allows us to get everything pretty much down on a convex or concave area. Now we're going to peel this back, make sure that our design is good, make sure it's where we want it. And we're going to mask off around this. What I like to do is go ahead and kind of just build an area around this. We've got a masking machine over here on the wall. We're going to get some paper. Of course, a small design like this, we won't have to mask off the whole tank, just enough to keep overspray from getting around on anything. And of course, this is this is base coated, but it's also been clear coated. The reason I like to put a base, uh, just a little couple of coats clear underneath before I do airbrush work is so if we get any overspray out here, I can lightly just wet sand it off the top of that clear and we're good to go. Yeah, I just started that paper on the machine, so that's why. I... Brian has a tough time with the masking machine. <laughs> oh, you're saying you didn't realize that perfect cat there was on paper. <laughs> So it can be done. Just one more piece. Gotta figure it out now. Huh? Dissolve this in the shot. You see all this? Should be. Yeah. So we're gonna be right back to you once we get everything uh, ready to start spraying some paint. We gotta find the white paint I got mixed up for this and we'll be right back with you. I'm using an Iwata Eclipse and uh, she's an older one. She don't like to shut off on me. I gotta order a new valve for it, but that doesn't hurt us here. And uh, we're just gonna lightly as light as we can and still cover it. Spray some white on this thing. You don't want to get this too wet too quick. Especially with white over black. We want to get it on there and kind of let it dry. This stuff doesn't take a few seconds. I'm using base coat. Mix 50-50 just like you'd spray it out of a paint gun. And uh, straight automotive stuff, TPG, shop line. Yeah, I know it ain't Deltron, but this is airbrushing. We don't need the expensive stuff. It's gonna go on there, it's gonna stick good. We won't have any problem. We're gonna get a 
give that just a second to tack a little bit. Put another coat on this. I don't like to get too much on it because when we clear it, we're gonna have to sand the clear a little bit because there'll be a little bit of a paint ridge. Anytime you're using a stencil, you're gonna see a little bit of a paint ridge in your clear after you're done clearing everything. We tend to sand everything down with 2000 anyway and then buff it. So it's gonna, it's gonna get slick sanded anyway. And uh, I think we're good. We're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna give it about 10, 15, 20 minutes. We'll come back and peel it off. Let's see the logo. So now we get to unveil this and measure for the other side. So we're gonna leave these reference marks on so I can remeasure them and we'll show you how we measure that. that one that's our reference mark there gently so we don't need to clear I'm gonna pull that it looks like everything's dry enough I don't see any paint coming up When you're peeling this mask, be careful not to touch the base coat with the blade or you're liable to uh, kind of put a little scratch in it. What I do is, is I get this blade under that tape, put my finger on it. That allows me to pull it with the blade trying not to touch the actual paint. My hands are clean. They don't look clean, but they're clean. I just got paint all over them. And, uh, pieces are pain but necessary the main thing with this mask is you don't want to miss any pieces of this mask what will happen is is once you clear this you'll think it's all fine and dandy you go to sanding it and you see yellow pop out and you figured out you left a piece of mask and what it'll do is it'll leave, leave a little divot and you got to fill that in with clear, which adds another hour or two to your project. Everything's nice and crisp looking.
what I'm doing right here, because I missed this, is I'm just taking the razor blade and scraping off the white a little bit. So that we can kind of clean that image up a little bit there. Now what, I, what I'm doing right now is I'm just rubbing my hand over this to uh, see all the tiny little flakes. That's where the paint has built up around the tape. What I'm doing is we're gonna take that off. And we'll get a tack rag here in a minute and we're gonna get all, rid of all those little pieces. You can pick these up at the automotive store as well. Any place that sells paint is gonna have tack rag. Has a little bit of sticky. <clears throat> as you notice, as soon as I rub over that, it pretty much gets any little pieces. Now, of course, before we paint, we'll of course tack everything off, but I just wanna get these off and make sure the image is good and clean. And as you can, as we can see, I got one little spot I wanna work on, just to take some paint off. You can only do this if you've got clear in between your uh, paint and your the paint you just put on. You can just gently scrape that off the top and it'll look like the other side. Especially once we get clear on it, that'll all look more black. <clears throat> so. See, we've got a nice image there. We'll take a good shot of it here after we get the other side done and uh, maybe the back fender tonight too. This is an old school woodworking caliper measuring device. <clears throat> My great uncle was a famous violin maker. He made bats violins. Of course, I'm a musician my whole life as well. But uh, he was a very famous luthier. And uh, these are some of his old tools that were in his shop when he passed away. We all got some tools from Jack Bernard Bats, if you want to look him up, B-A-T-T-S. And uh, I'm using this to measure where I put my reference marks. I've got a spot on the front of the tank that I'm referencing, and I've got this caliper adjusted so that when we flip this around, I can put that mark on this side. And what I'm gonna do is I measure from the top of the other side there. This is gonna give me an idea where that logo center is setting. So that gets me that center. Now, we're gonna set this to the center of that tape. We'll bring this in a little bit because I want to uh, basically have a top center. And right there it is. <clears throat> So what we want to do is we're going to get another piece of tape and we're going to put it on this side right about where that's going to hit and this is going to give our center for the opposite side. Now I have to double check this because we need to kind of make sure our tape is in the right spot. So I want to come down to about the edge of that tape and we're going to come over here. And we're going to come from the bottom of the tank up and uh, grab another piece of that green tape. Okay. Just a small piece. <clears throat> What this is gonna do is allow us to kind of preset where the top of that logo is gonna set. 
Now, we've got our reference mark, bottom, top. Can you see me over here? No. I'm over here just that. We're going to do center at the bottom, approximately center on the top, on the tape, which is going to allow me to drop this logo in on this side at almost, probably really close to the exact same spot, at the same angle. The angle on this from side to side is going to be the, the issue. We want to make sure everything hits as far as what you can see from the top. Another painter told me one time, hell, you can't see both sides at the same time. No, you can't, but I like to keep it pretty much as uniform as possible. So we're peeling the backing. <clears throat> piece of mask come out right there. I'm gonna lay that back in. Yep. Do that again. <clears throat> Make sure that sticks back to the backing paper. Now I need to look at the other side because we pulled some so this would have a little bit fatter area. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out now. By the way, this is not just a copied old number seven logo. We physically did some changes to it so it wouldn't be the exact Jack Daniels logo. I always like to run from the bottom to the top. Stick it down in the middle, same as the other one. Go out in all directions from the middle. That way any deformation of the vinyl or the tape <clears throat> will be able to push down. See how we got that little bit of deformation, but I was able to push it out. If I had this a different direction, we might have a little tougher time with that. You can see I almost pulled a piece out of that.
Now, what I want to show you, see where we've got this wrinkle. We need to make sure that that is pushed down because anywhere there's a lift, that paint will get under it and leave just a little bit of a blurry edge. You see how sharp that other side is. We want to keep everything nice and sharp, especially dealing with small stuff like this. We want to make sure everything stays sharp. And hopefully we can use some of the paper that we've already used. Kind of mask everything. We need some tape to get the other edges here. I think we'll be having enough paper here. Now this is not any freehand airbrushing or anything like that. This is just doing some logo work. Uh, if you go back and look through my videos, you'll see, you'll see the Eddie video and some skull videos where I'm doing freehand stuff, which is always fun to watch, fun to learn from. I try to be as descriptive as possible when I'm doing stuff so people understand why I'm doing it, not just that I'm doing it. And you gotta figure it out in the long run. So I think we're ready to shoot this side. Yeah. Airbrush is already loaded up, ready to go. We're already run out of paint right in the middle of it. But, uh... Just trying to go easy and not put too much overspray out there. I'm not running the exhaust fan so you guys don't have to listen to it. <coughs> Ryan's choking back there. Like I said, we run out of paint. Can't seem to get rid of this scratchy throat. I don't know. Everybody's got it. What I'm watching when I'm doing this is I want to make sure this color is covering up the black. Making sure we're not going to have a light area once we peel everything back. And you'll get a feel for what it takes to make sure everything's good and coated. The clear will answer the question. If you're a little bit light here or there, white over black, when you hit this with a clear coat, it is just going to stand out like crazy anyway. We had thought about antiquing this. But the actual Jack Daniels logo is a bright white again. <coughs> Against black. So, like the other one, we're gonna give this a little bit of time. If I was to peel this off right now, it would probably come out okay. But if it's a little wet around the edge, it's liable to peel up the paint and leave just a tiny jagged edge. We want this to stay good and sharp. So we're gonna give this the full 15, 20 minutes that I normally give stuff and, and let that dry before we even peel this up so we get a nice sharp image. Uh, we'll go ahead and peel this paper now. There's no need for it now. But we're gonna leave the vinyl mask on for a few more minutes. And we don't need these reference points now, so we can peel these up. 
in a minute. Peel these. Man, it is. I, I thought about doing some shading around it, but it is just so clean. I mean, it looks like the label, you know. Like I said, we chose a different seven. We didn't do the old number seven because there's a number seven there. It's kind of already there. There's no need in it. We wanted that seven a little larger than it is in the actual Jack Daniels logo because on this, probably on the side covers and the back fender is going to get the actual kind of sort of the old number seven logo, but we stretched it a little bit to make it look the way we wanted it on the back fender. So give us a few minutes and we'll be back. And by the way, check out the new stand. Uh, I had no boat rail. I had no boat rail laying in the back by some boat parts that I have here. I've got two or three boats, so. Had these old bar stools laying around, so we took the bottom off, bolted this on, and it's, it's working great for a tank stand, so. Uh, I've got other holes in here so we can adjust it. This tank's a little odd because it's so shallow back here. We didn't want to. Uh, <clears throat> we didn't want to do that. Thing about this tank is, is it is going to tilt forward a little bit on the bike. This tank has a crossover right here, and uh, because because the petcock is up front, it, it's going to require that crossover be put in so that fuel will come from this side of the tank to this side of the tank. And uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. There we go. Okay, so we're getting ready to unveil the second side. <coughs> Excuse me change of the season around here. My sinuses are acting up. Brian's is acting up. We're hacking and everything else. I'm sure you guys are dealing with it too, unless you're down south. We're not too far north. We're at the southern tip of Illinois. Like I said, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not getting close to the clear coat. I'm just kind of grabbing the very edge of this mask and getting it to start to move. You don't want to dig on this at all, especially around these fine lines where I'm working right now. If I get into that white, it'll scratch it off and leave a little, little tiny black mark there, which we're trying to avoid. do it like I do and you got a coat of clear on this you got a little bit of leeway even if you happen to just barely scratch that clear or something the next coat of clear that goes over this after we're done will bridge all that you won't even see it now we're back to making sure we've got all the little pieces of mask off and like I said I'm just going to gently rub my hand over this to take those edges down <coughs> And uh, Nurse Ryan here, <laughs> he's gonna hand me my surgical tools. And uh, there we go. Two sides done. Got the back fender to go, folks. I feel like uh, we're making some progress here. Ryan works for me here in the shop and uh, part of the shop. 
and this is one of his projects for his wife. And uh, this situation is, is we don't get as much time on our own projects as we'd like because we still are taking on a few jobs. I've got some jobs to finish from before the move that we had to move out to the new shop and uh, we'll be uh, back on the shovelhead project pretty soon. So I'm starting to gather some more parts for it. And uh, we're gonna get to the back fender now. We're putting an oval on here. So I've got a center mark here and a center mark down here. We're just gonna kinda, just like the others, gonna rub from the center out so that give that vinyl a little bit of chance to stretch a little bit and try to come in where we want it. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Oh yeah, that's gonna turn out nice. Now you get to see the other logo. Like I said, this was developed from the actual logo, but the actual logo is is shrunk down. So what we've done is, is I stretched it in the program a little bit to kind of give it a little more of a look for this back fender. Instead of just a circle right there, it actually looks like a plaque there. And uh, we're gonna mask this up if Ryan wants to go fight the masking machine. And uh, get us some paper. She watered up my paper. This is going on a little sportster that we customed out. It's got a Springer front end on it. You'll be seeing that before too long where we're putting the uh, sheet metal on it. It's almost finished. And uh, actually going to be a really good looking little 40. A lot of powder coating has been done on the motor. It actually has the black springer with the copper springs on it. So <clears throat> that's going to be really cool. Crossing, we won't have to have a paper for that. Everyone should have a masking machine. They're pretty cheap. You can buy them at Harbor Freighter anywhere, most of the time. I don't even remember where I bought these. I bought them about probably 20, 30 years ago. You gotta have an expert like me. And, uh, if you, if you got somebody that's helping you, you can always make them get the paper off of it because they'll stand and rip paper up and tape trying to get get it off there to snap right. Uh, let's see how much white we got left in the brush. Probably not enough. Yeah, give me a little bit. Okay. Those quite a ways. Yeah, it don't take much. If I was just airbrushing, not painting anything, that that pint of paint would probably last a year. Ooh, I got that a little heavy. Didn't let that dry. Another thing, I had this paint pin down quite a bit. Supposed to be 50 50, and I poured a little bit much of thinner on it, so I'm going a little light. And uh, I'll have to coat it a couple times to make sure it's covered good. But I don't like the paint to be thick when I'm shooting real crisp stuff. It needs to be, needs to be small, fairly wet, so it'll get in the edges of the small lines like on the end and stuff like that. Then we use the airbrush to kind of just dry that, oh, where I got a little heavy on the finger there. I 
guess if you're a girl airbrusher, heavy on the finger is probably not a bad thing. <laughs> we'll see if YouTube strikes me for that. It's a joke, people. If you get offended by that, you probably uh, shouldn't be watching my channel anyway because I'm sure I've said a lot more, way more offensive stuff. We're going to let this dry. We'll be back with you to peel this up. And uh, we'll be ready for clear one. Okay, we've got a little bit of dry time on this. Not as much as I probably should have, but I think we're okay. As soon as I start peeling this, if I see any evidence of it uh, trying to lift the paint anywhere, I'll stop and we'll give it some more time. But I'm impatient. I'm... Is it Captain Obvious? I'm Captain Impatient. <laughs> Ryan's Captain Late. <laughs> Ryan right. doesn't get in a hurry about anything. My dad used to say. Except when we're on the dragon's tail. He'll get in a hurry then. Wow. We, we got to play with the jack box. We'll get on the big hogs and go down the dragon and give them jack box a run for their money. There's a lot of them guys can sure beat us, but we ain't slacking none. We ain't the 25 mile an hour guys. No, no. We can outrun the dragon. Of course, we've run it enough that we kind of even remember where the curves are now. So, I mean, you kind of know where the curves are with the dragon because they're always right there. There is no such thing as not a curve on the dragon. The guy asked me, he said, how do you know where the curves are? It's about every 100 feet. <laughs> I said, just imagine one. It ain't got to be 100 feet. I mean, some of them are pretty tight. We gotta do that triangle though. Yeah, I'm ready. Question is, is it okay now after the flood? Yeah, it's fine. Triangle's not even around that area. I really love doing the Blue Ridge Parkway. And yeah. they're talking about indefinitely closing it. Yeah. Which I think is a crock of shit. That is the motorcycle mecca out there. And of course, uh, we don't want to say what's under the ground out there and probably the reason they're not going to open that back up for us. But, uh, hey, tourism is suffer. Uh, it, North Carolina will probably. Well, that's kind of where everybody gets ready for the dragon is the Blue Ridge Parkway. You know, they'll go, they'll get gutsy enough to go on it and then they'll think, okay. For the chair hollow. I handle that. There's a chair hollow. I handled those, so it's time to go do the dragon. Of course. We didn't get the memo. We hit the dragon first. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't uh, we didn't even give them a chance to think about it. Of course I had done it back in 2005. <clears throat> Ryan hadn't been out there yet. I kind of knew what was coming. <clears throat> and uh what we go to the dragon three or four times last year. Four? Four times. We did the Dragon four times last year. Can't tell you enough. If you are a motorcyclist of any kind, I mean, there's guys out there on groms and mopeds and anything you can imagine. I've seen one on a damn uh, motor scooter, like a wheelchair scooter. <laughs> <laughs> Passing the heart. He's passed the. Uh, I think it was a crotch rocket. That he had that thing zapped up. It was flying like a go kart. I bet that'd be fun on a go kart. But uh, we love doing the dragon. Uh, we've been all over the U.S., and that's probably our most favorite place to go. Plus, you got to go out <clears throat> while you're out there. You got to go over to Maggie Valley and see the Wheels Through Time Museum. See our buddy Matt Waxler out there. I was very good friends with Dale Waxler who started the Wheels Through Time Museum here in Mount Vernon, Illinois, 28 miles from us. And I've told this story before, but uh, I did wall murals for Dale 
when I was in my early 20s and Dale put me on three Harley Davidson's free lock, stock, and barrel. Here's the title. I'd go in airbrush for two or three weeks and do what he wanted in the museum and in the, in the Harley dealership there and uh, he'd walk out and hand me a title. And uh, I, I can't thank him enough for that. I was young, 20 years old. You know how it is when you're 20, you got no money, and you're, you really want a Harley. Man, Dell really, really took care of me. I, I can't say enough how much I love that man. And here we go. Check that out. That looks good. Everything has come together tonight. We're still trying to decide if we're going to put, we may put a large seven on the side covers, but we those we haven't really got those together yet and got them prepped and got them in black. Uh, and we'll probably add those to that. As you can tell, that paint's a little heavier there. We're getting a little more ridges on that, so. See how sharp that comes out after you get those ridges off. And uh, we're gonna let this paint dry for the night. And uh, you guys stay tuned because uh, this will be going into clear. We'll give you a shot of it after we clear it. And when we start mounting it to the uh, Sportster, we'll uh, film that as well so you can see the final product with uh, all the other custom work that's been done to this 40 there. It's, uh, is that an old one? I think that's an. Is it 2000? Yep. 2000 Sportster. Uh, yeah, you're right, it is 2000 Sportster because when I put the lifters in. Mm -hmm. By the way, folks, quick tip 99 model lifters don't work in a 2000 model Sportster, <laughs> and vice versa. Uh, they are just a few thousands different, so do not put a set of 99 lifters in a 2000, or you'll get about a half an hour riding time before those seize up in the bores. And that's what happened to this bike. We bought it uh, from a fellow that had, uh, someone before him had sold him the bike not running. When he got it running, it quit on him. And uh, that was why we had a lifter get hot and uh, jam up in the board. Luckily it didn't damage the board. So once we put the new cams and the new lifters in it, uh, it's got a set of Andrews B grinds in it. Uh, this little thing's gonna run already a 1200 kit so it was an actual 1200 to begin with so stay tuned everybody and don't forget to like and subscribe this is dave and ryan from iron blackbird cycles <laughs>